Well, folks, who could have ever seen this coming? The giant that is Disney is crumbling right before our eyes. Absolutely unbelievable. And the most direct beneficiary of all this is a company named Fubo. Very small company. And uh, my gosh, is this like the most perfect scenario that could ever have played out here is literally playing out right now. So first video I want to react to, I want to react to two videos in this one. This one's from a couple hours ago. I actually watched this one uh, on, on Fast Money um, actually shortly after it was live. Disney and Charter Fight can't be resolved in a positive way. This is a, one of the most knowledgeable men in the world in regards to these subjects of uh, negotiations, in regards to the media business and everything like that. And he's going to share some great insight here on how bad of a position Disney's actually in. I didn't even realize how bad of a position Disney's really in. And that's why it's important to listen to some of these folks that come from this industry so they can kind of give you some context about how bad it really is over at Disney, okay? And then next video I want to react to, this one's from 33 minutes ago. I haven't got to see this one yet, but looking forward to getting in this one. Disney has to cave in regards to the situation. So uh, I'll react to that, kind of give my opinions. And, you know, it's interesting because Disney stock today is at multi-year lows. Like, if you bought the stock in the past five, Five plus years, you've lost money on this stock, right? And it's it's a fascinating situation because I never knew how many people really despised and hated Disney until I started talking about the stock over the past few months. Because obviously, it's at like multi-year lows, so you know a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about it. But it's it's fascinating. There's so many people that hate Disney on so many different fronts. You have obviously like the go go woke go broke uh, crowd. I always see those comments if I ever talk about Disney, right? And Disney deserves this. They're go woke go broke. Then you have um, a lot of folks from Hollywood that actually really hate Disney that have felt like Disney's kind of used and abused them over the years. Um, and currently, obviously, that's a huge uh, fight that's going on in, in all of Hollywood and actors and actresses and all the folks in Hollywood in general that are fighting for better pay and better wages and those sorts of things, right? Uh, on top of that, you have, oh my gosh, you have the people that go to the parks and have to pay outrageous <laughs> prices, obviously, and people feel like, you know, it's so expensive just to take your kids to Disneyland. And then you have shareholders that are very unhappy with the company because, I mean, if you bought this stock over the past many years, you've lost money on it. And it seems like the story just keeps it getting worse and worse and worse. Like if this was a Disney movie, I mean, you're kind of waiting for the, the moment where things get better and it just seems like, when's it ever going to get better? Because all it is, is just keep getting worse. So anyways, appreciate you guys joining me for this one. New all-time high subscribers in the history of the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. And also get my free workshop uh, when this video is over here today. That will be pinned comment down there. Alrighty, guys. So let's get into this one. Newsweek editor at large and first NBC cable president. Tom, great to have you with us. Great to be here. Congrats on the new set. Thank you. We are loving it so far, 35 minutes in. <laughs> um, but wa I want to get back to this topic here. And Tom, how do you view this? Because it does seem like this could have massive implications in terms of the future of legacy TV, how, how this negotiations go. Oh, I, I agree with that uh, completely. Uh, to steal uh, one of Guy's favorite terms, I think Disney has gone from uh, stud of the media space to uh, to dud. Uh, it did not need this fight right now. Uh, it's got uh, so many deals in front of it that it has to do. The Hulu Comcast deal, the uh, selling of ABC, the partnering with ESPN, and now it has a uh, charter to resolve. And it's really hard to judge this company on any kind of op metrics now. It's all about these deals and what it can do. And this is much more existential for Disney than it is for Charter. The thing wow. to realize about Charter and cable companies. Is so he feels this deal is much more important to Disney than it is to Charter. He's going to explain why here, but I think that's very important in itself because in the past, that's a huge change up from 10, 20, 30 years ago. Disney was always in position of power because they owned ESPN, right? And they were always the ones that could push their weight around. And at the end of the day, satellite companies would fold. Uh, obviously, uh, cable companies would fold. And the fact that this man feels like now we're at a point where Disney's now in the position of weakness, that's huge change of the tides, right? And how does all this play in with Fubo, by the way? I'll explain that a little later on, but let's hear his thoughts here general right now is they used to be scared to death of these fights because the programmers would always win and they pull the programming right around something like Monday night football and it would have to force a resolution because the cable companies couldn't withstand the pressure. Right now, cable companies have become pretty indifferent to their margins on the video side of their business. It's all about the broadband business, increasingly the mobile telephony business, but it's not about the video business anymore. And that's why Charter's ability to withstand 
withstand pressure here is a whole different dynamic. And this is important. Important. If this goes on for a, more than a month, Charter gets leverage. So this is important here because this goes back to you. Remember, I don't know if you guys got to see the main channel video here today, okay? But I showed that basically, Foob, uh, excuse me, Spectrum, which is owned by uh, Charter and that's a huge uh, cable provider, they were sending emails out to their customers to basically sign up for Fubo for a discount for the next two months specifically. So that was almost like a tell of like, is is Charter thinking this is going to take a couple months? Because why give a two month discount? For Fubo, unless you're thinking this might potentially take two months, right? First off, I'm still questioning why they ever did the deal with Fubo because I think a lot of those people that are going to sign up for Fubo aren't coming back to Spectrum, in my personal opinion, okay? We'll see how all that's handled. But I'm just like, once people experience Fubo, good luck going back to cable after that because the, the experience from Fubo is, like, way better. Like, being able to watch four games on your big screen all at once, like, game changer and, like, yeah, good luck going to, back to cable after that. And plus, you get usually way more channels than you could ever imagine. So, but the bottom line is it seems like Charter wants to drag this thing out, if anything, right? And here we are, massive football games coming up here over the next uh, five or six days. And ugh, if no deal's done, it's crazy because you would think Disney's in pole position, but he's saying no, Charter's in pole position. Yes, this could really be a uh, watershed event in terms of the programming side of the industry and have they lost their leverage if they... Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is huge. Event in No way this is resolved in a positive way for Disney. No, no way this is resolved in a positive way for Disney says an expert on this industry, like who actually comes from this industry, knows these deals and negotiations and these positions of power inside now. Oh boy, okay, that is absolutely massive. So the programming side of the industry and have they lost their leverage? If they have lost their leverage, probably deserve to be re-rated downward. And so this is really one to watch. This is sort of a, a glimpse of the future, Tom, if you will. I mean, we all, or so many people have been uh, talking about the death of legacy TV, the, the, the death of, of cable, the cable bundle, and here we are in the precipice. How do you think about the economics if Disney were to just go, you know, fast forward to direct to consumer? What does that mean? Can you just sort of walk us through the thinking? Uh, yes. Well, first you have the issue of all media companies are trying to milk their legacy businesses to uh, get as much cash as they can to support the development of their streaming businesses. And so what does that remind you of? What does that remind you of? If there's any Tesla shareholders watching this video right now, you know what that reminds you of. That reminds you of Legacy Auto and how they're trying to milk the, the profits of their internal combustion engine uh, vehicle business to offset the uh, obviously massive losses they've been taking in electric vehicles, right? That's exactly what I thought of when I thought of that. We all know about cord cutting. This is this is cord hair cutting, meaning even with the people who get the bundle, the issue is here, will Charter have the right to take the biggest channel, ESPN, and distribute it to fewer people who have the bundle, meaning lowering those economics coming out of the legacy business, having less money to support the development of the streaming business. Now, coming the other way, Charter says, hey, we want all your streaming businesses for free. We want to include those in the bundle. Why? Because you've taken all the best programming off your linear channels and moved it to streaming, and yet our subscribers are paying more than ever for the programming that you are charging us for. So they should get the streaming services for free. Now, that's not sustainable for Disney or the other legacy media companies with streaming but there's probably going to have to be some kind of compromise yep. that Charter distributes those streaming services at some kind of discounted price. And Disney looks to get Charters and the other cable operators' shoulders behind their streaming business, which are very under distributed relative to Netflix and how much distribution there is of cable subs. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me so much of another situation, okay? Disney thinking they're too big for all these other guys, and now they're starting to realize, oh, man, maybe we do need these other guys really bad. You know what this reminds me of? Another stock that's in a lot of trouble. Nike. Nike. They tried to, uh, you know, go more direct to consumer. It's failed. It has failed big time over the past year or two. They try to, you know, keep a lot of products exclusive, try to, you know, not be as close with companies like Foot Locker. And it ended up hurting both companies. Foot Locker was hurt from that, and Nike's been hurt from that substantially. These companies need each other. 
Disney needs the satellite companies. They need the cable companies. They need the streaming companies like YouTube TV and Fubo. They need these guys. And by them thinking, oh, we can just do it ourselves, everybody's going to come to us, they're starting to realize, no, it's not. It doesn't work that way, okay? You need these people to promote your products and services. You need them much more than you think you don't need them. It's a little bit of a slap, a little bit of a reality check. And Disney's getting that reality check now at this point in time. Wow. Tom, it's Karen. Thanks for being on. What do you think is the thing that Disney's most likely to give up? They have to give up something. Uh, I think they will probably give up how much of the cable base of charter needs to get ESPN. Uh, that's probably something in the 80 or so percentage now that they have to distribute ESPN to 8% of their subscribers. Uh, they'll, they'll lower that threshold. I think it's just very difficult to uh, say in a streaming era with more, with more consumer choice, somehow uh, all cable households, even those that don't want sports, have to take the sports tier and, and pay more. So there'll probably be some give there. Much harder to give on uh, getting these streaming services for free. Although, as I said, there's probably some compromise where they become distributors of streaming services at some discounted price. Yeah. So uh, a couple things here. One is uh, in regards to Fubo specifically, right? Why does this benefit Fubo so massively? The first reason is the obvious one. The second reason is a little more of a deeper reason. Okay. The first obvious reason is, you know, with Charter and this whole breakup with Disney and however long that's going to take, whether it takes a few more days, a few more weeks, or a few more months. I mean, it's the best thing that could ever happen to Fubo when you're going into football season. Like, Fubo attracts a ridiculous amount of customers regardless if this if this happened or not. But the fact that this is going on, it just puts, you know, cherries on top of the whipped cream in regards to this whole situation for Fubo, okay? But the second reason this is matters for Fubo significantly and more of a hidden reason, in my opinion, that's a little deeper here, okay, other than just being able to attract way more subscribers than they even had thought possible, right? And the LTV you're going to get there is... Disney is getting a reality check that they need these companies, that they need these companies. They can't do it themselves. It's not the way it works. And so I expect Disney moving forward to understand how much they need these companies to partner with these companies and charge fair fees and work fair deals and realize it's not all about maximizing the absolute dollar amount you're going to make today. It, because if they're going to go that route, they're just kamikaze in themselves, right? That's all they're doing. And their plane is going straight down. So they, they've got to realize they're going to have to give a lot more than they had to give in the past. And that's going to take a little bit of time for Bob Iger to kind of realize that. This is not 10 years ago. This is not 20 years ago when Disney had all the, all the, the advantage on their side. It's not like that anymore. And so they've got to understand, they've got to do their part. And, you know, look at how much Fubo's grown over time without even having uh, Turner. They don't even have TNT, uh, if I recall, they don't have TBS either, but TNT, which has all those basketball games, and yet Fubo's doing just fine. It, growing subscribers like insanity, uh, growing, uh, you know, obviously revenues like insane, and yet they don't even need TNT, right? So, you know, I think these guys are realizing we've got to work fair deals. I can't have us make all the money and our, guy, our, our companies that are helping us out make no money because it's ultimately going to produce a uh, volatile situation. And now you've got an ugly situation like this with Charter. And, um, you know, I, I don't believe that gentleman talked about in that clip, but I believe he talked about in the longer clip was he was even speaking about like Disney's got to get stuff done ASAP because they got NBA rates coming up. You've got to remember they're constantly having to negotiate for all these other deals. And they need that cash flow to keep coming in because next thing you know, they're trying to work NFL deals. They're trying to work NBA deals. They're trying to work uh, Major League Baseball deals. They're trying to work soccer deals. They're trying to work F1 deals, trying to work NASCAR deals, all this stuff, man. It never ends. And so you need that cash flow to keep coming in so you can keep the content coming that people expect. If your content starts to drop even more, right, then ESPN loses more relevancy and more relevancy and more relevancy. The only reason ESPN is so relevant is because they have so many games and so they control so many channels. If they start to lose rights, college football, for a lot of these different teams and different uh, conferences, 
all of a sudden ESPN's way less relevant, okay? This matters significantly, so they've got to keep the money pouring in. And when the money's not pouring in, <laughs> I tell you, that's not a good thing for Disney because we know, look at Disney's income statement. Tell me that's a good income statement. It's not. They need to, they need to get things straightened out ASAP. First, let's bring in now top-ranked media analyst and Needham & Company managing director, Laura Martin. Laura, we tried to play the dramatic music because, as I was explaining to some friends this weekend, this, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, is not just a fight like we've seen before between a cable company and a network. This could change everything. <laughs> I agree with you. Now, this is a fight for the future of the TV ecosystem. I think Disney has to cave. I think these two entities lose or win together because the fight is for attention against user generated content to get video games and against Netflix. If this company, meaning Disney, doesn't figure out a way to get payment streams from Charter, it's $2 billion a year from Charter alone, from the linear TV. That's the next thing Disney has to worry about. You want to know who Disney really has to worry about? Freaking Netflix. Think about this, right? We know Netflix is just pouring in money constantly. All their subscribers are always happy. Always just pouring in money. If Netflix, they have not shown any real ambitions to go after live sports yet, right? They've only shown really interest in like creating great sports programming, documentaries, things like that. But they have not gone the route of live sports. Disney's got to be a little worried that if if netflix wants to start going after live sports netflix has big pockets and they got a lot of money pouring in and disney's not in that financial position right now so th that's this is why this is such an important subject for disney to get fixed and realize we need to be friends with all these companies or we're going to be uh fighting for our lives against netflix and remember netflix is coming out with more original content than ever and they're going to be more of a competitive threat on, in terms of original content as well, right? The system, they have no competitive advantage over Netflix. So they need this extra revenue stream in order to compete with other streamers and other forms of content that are taking time away from linear TV. Why does Disney need to cave? Disney needs to cave because it needs to maximize reach in order to maximize its ad revenue. And charters still, as you just said, about 50% of the U.S. population still gets its, um, still uses the bundle of which Charter is a third, 33%. So it needs that revenue stream. It needs not to, yeah, it needs not to have streaming losses added to a loss of $2 billion of revenue because it can't figure out a deal with Charter. It's crazy. Might, so look at these loss uh, of, stocks here. It needs not to have. So look at these stocks. Comcast's only one that's up three month performance. And then you pull up Fubo's three month performance. Okay. And it's just extraordinary. They're like literally like they're the only ones really benefiting from all this and Google as well from YouTube TV. Those are the only two stocks that are really benefiting from this whole craziness. Streaming losses added to a loss of $2 billion of revenue because it can't figure out a deal with Charter. And my get and again, you probably know, I'm going to speculate. I don't know. Uh, what charter executives are saying. Charter executives are probably saying, Spectrum Cable, by the way, that's, that's their parent company, are saying, we're basically paying Disney a ton of money, a lot more than we were years ago, and other networks, by the way, to basically subsidize a product that they want to use that will eventually kill a large part of our business. Is that a fair analogy? Totally fair. It is totally fair. So when you enter the ABC upfront, which is owned by the Walt Disney Company, all of their new content that's sexy and hot and interesting is on their streaming service. So they're not, other than ESPN, which is a very, very big in input into the linear TV ecosystem, none of the content companies are really putting their best content on linear TV, but all of them mm -hmm. want to increase payments from Charter and yep. Comcast and Altice. So those companies, for Charter being the first contract that came up, are saying no more. Yep. You need to give us all the content from your streaming assets, and we don't want you to charge us for it if you want us to increase the, the market rate that we're paying you. Yeah, because also the Disneys, the Peacocks, the Comcast, you know, the whatever it is of the world, they need something Charter has. They may not need the cable TV side, but they need the Internet. Right, Laura? They're gonna, right, at least until something else, Starlink, whatever comes along, they need the pipe. 
I mean, Charter and other cable companies that have spent tens of billions, like Comcast, our parent company, feeding a physical line into a home, they, they've got leverage, I think. I think it's more that they, they extend reach, that if you really lost Charter as a paying subscriber, you would lose ad revenue as well as the $2 billion that Charter pays you. And you have these massive locked in stocks sports rights fees that you're obligated to pay for the next decade if you're ESPN. Exactly. She broke it down perfect. I don't know where that man was going with this whole internet thing. Okay. Yeah, that was lost on her and me there. They're losing. So basically uh, Disney makes a bunch of money from charging just a flat fee, you know, uh, of, of, you know, we're going to charge you this much. Okay. Then on top of that, they make all that advertising money. So all those, ad- I don't want to say all the ads that you see, let's say you watch a football game on ESPN or a sporting event on ESPN. Disney's making a ton of money off all those ads. The actual service, let's say you're watching on Fubo, Fubo might have a few commercials in there here or there that they get to make some advertising money, but the most of it, the far majority, is Disney gets to make that money, right? And the same thing for almost all networks. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind there. So when you're talking about losing somebody like a charter, you're talking about many billions of dollars of losses there, right? And meanwhile, you're paying for all the, the fees, like she points out. For all these different sport leagues and things like that, and yeah, I tell you that's not cheap, man. These contracts are hundreds of millions, or they're billions of dollars when they go to do these contracts with different sporting uh, uh, events or or just leagues in general. You really just sort of can't lose the ad revenue, and you can't lose the two billion from Charter. So I think they're in a weakened position vis-a-vis Charter in this case. All right, Laura, as you know, because you live in L.A., by the way, and cover media, the Hollywood strike still going on, and securities filing today. Warner Brothers Discovery adjusted their full year earnings expectations saying they could take a hit of three to five and this is why disney's in such a weak spot right now right on top of that like is disney going to have any huge movies coming next year or the year after probably not because they're you know the whole strike's going on and everything like that so that's pushing back all the movie slates in a major way so that business is, is in not a good place obviously we've heard about some weakness in their parks business recently which is surprising because you would think that's still doing amazing uh, and that's with unemployment being so low. Imagine if unemployment goes up, you know that parks business is going to get hit even worse. Whew. $100 million if the strikes continue through the end of the year. I know there is. Oh, and then they got the problems in Florida. The DeSantis stuff. Holy smokes. Like, like, how many problems does this company have at once? If I was Bob Iger, I don't know if I can make it, man. I might just say, I'm tapping. I'm tapping, man. This is too much pain. Too much pain. Benefit to the Paramounts of the world Holy because they don't have to spend on content. They can use that money to pay down debt. You have mentioned that. That's probably why some of these stocks have gone up. But how much longer do you think these strikes are going to go on? So um, we've been saying through year end, which is to say we think they'll get settled in October or November. But these are entertainment, you know, you need the entire ecosystem to be working to do yep. to do any kind of creative content. Yep. And not everybody works between November and Christmas. So basically, sort of December is a lost month. So I think we go back to work on new scripts and TV January 1st and after that what is wow. my best guess on this. And I will t- point out, Warner Brothers increased its free cash flow estimate and said it's going to make a billion five in free cash flow in the quarter and in September because the strikes didn't settle because there's no cost of goods sold. You can't make yep. any content. So they're paying down debt much faster than investors um, thought, which is a positive for them because they were over levered. Yeah, that's an interesting, I don't, you know, cover Warner Brothers in, in regards to that situation. But the the bottom line is, in regards to this, the take home is Disney's in a weekend spot. They have fires all over the place. And I'm not talking about small ones. We're talking about each of these is massive, massive. And um, it's a mess. And the thing with Disney is at some point, the fire, I'm sure Iger will put all, all these major fires but I can tell you it's not happening tomorrow and it's not happening the next day. This is going to take at least a year, if not multiple years, to put out all these fires at Disney. It's a mess, man. And the only one that benefits from this, like I said, or, or a few, because Charter doesn't benefit from this really either. It's Fubo. It's YouTube TV.
Those are the two direct beneficiaries in a massive, massive way. And it could be Netflix over time, depending upon what route they want to go there. So, man, what a time. What a time. I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much for being here, folks. New all-time high subscribers in the history of the channel. I appreciate y'all. Much love as always. And have a great day. Also, get that free workshop. Pin comment down there. Peace.